Cosmic College, you learn of the mendacious miasma, the matrix that mangles our minds. From macrocosm to microcosm, you cut crap with Occam's razor. Together, we contemplate the chain of existence. We get the strength from the metacosmic void to free ourselves from the matrix and our slave mentality mode. Dr. Sasha and Janet Care Lesson teach the lesson post cutting edge savant from anthropology, exopolitics, extraterrestrial studies, ancient history, psychology, astronomy, physics, and all chakra tantra. We also feature ufology, sociology, geology, philosophy, and theogen research, and relationship counseling. At the Cosmic College, experts in hypnotic regression and progression, holotropic, contact therapy, existential analysis, share their methods and experiences. You hear programs to center yourself, access your fair inner witness, and recognize, accept, coordinate, and synergize your multidimensional, multi-local subcells. At the Cosmic College, you get practical steps to spiritual ascension. And here are your hosts, Janet Kira and Dr. Sasha Lesson. Aloha, everybody. Welcome to Aquarian Radio at AquarianRadio.com. This is an episode of Cosmic College. And I'm your host, Janet Kira Lesson, and Dr. Sasha Lesson will be joining us shortly. He's on his way back from his exercise in town. <laughs> Today we have a very special guest. His name is uh, Robert Evans, Bob Evans. And he is an incredible researcher. We've just discovered each other about two weeks ago. And I'm going to let him tell you a little bit about himself and his research. But today we're going to focus on the Anunnaki and their interactions with humanity throughout time from the ancients, ancient times through the modern. And we're going to be looking at some photos that I'm posting on my website, Aquarian Radio. Didn't get it up there yet. I will have it after this show. And uh, it'll be available for you to look at and review what we're talking about. So let me unmute and pull Bob into the queue here. Aloha. Aloha, Janet. Yes. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for coming to our show today. Oh, thank you for even asking me back. I mean, you have a fantastic show and listeners on it. Yes. Oh, yes, and it's getting bigger all the time, and everybody's downloading it and sharing it with each other, and and we're posting it up on Facebook and all over the place because I think that the world is getting super excited about the Anunnaki and and what it means for humanity. And um, Oh, yes. So where ahead, do you want sorry. to start today? Oh, go ahead. You go. You, first of all, I said that you were going to tell yourself and your research, so take it away. Yes. Well, years ago, when I originally started doing my research, and I was actually researching the Anunnaki and the plant Nibiru, and what did they actually have in common with, you know, humanity? Were they actually real? And my friends told me to stay away from Zachariah Sitchin and that Russian uh, gem. I can't really pronounce his name all the time, so I'm not going to. I actually had to. I actually had the time frame. And that worked somewhere around 1550, somewhere in that area. And I started digging up stuff all over the place. Uh, I went into uh, ancient China talking, listening to a guy named Mozai, M-O-Z-I. Uh, one of my friends told me to look in book five that he has. And this is all on the Internet. that You can actually go and do a search on your own. Now, on in yeah, it would be, it'd be great if, if we could put these links. We'll put these links on the uh, the page oh, for this uh, show. So we'll do yes. that after the show. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Back to Bozai. About halfway down the page, 
he starts talking about this one God that showed up that helped him, that helped one warlord to be supreme over all the other warlords. And they talked about what happened. Uh, he had sand rain from the sky for almost 10 days. He had forest fires start. They had a bad cold spell, bad heat spell, and all this other stuff. I was like, oh, you know, this is what's happening in China, and that's almost what's happening over in ancient Egypt. And, you know. Oh, wait, let's, I, I, let's stop there for a moment. So you're saying. Let me read this real quick here. Uh, Heaven ordered yeah. their destruction. The sun rose at night. It rained blood for three days. Dragons emerged in the temple and dogs cried in the marketplace. Ice came in yeah. summer and earth cracked until water gushed forth. The five yeah. grains appeared in mutation. So they had all these things happening. When they're talking about dragons, are they talking about beings? Or are they talking about fire raining down like maybe meteorites and, and things like that? Probably what do you think? Probably the fire raining down just as it did in Egypt. Fire from the sky came down and burned everything that grew, destroyed some places, then stones came down. Same thing happened in China. Stones smashed the pharaoh's uh, palace, killing his firstborn son. Wow. Uh, Do you, you know, know the time frame for this, when this was happening? Because this all, is interesting. All around... The, Sometime early 1600s down to 1586 B.C. Okay, I'm going to make a note of that. Early 1600s to 1586 B.C. Oh, to 86? Yeah, 1586. Yeah. As you come close to our times, the dates get lower and lower and lower. And the further back, they get higher, higher, higher. Yes, and, I understand it. I'm sorry. And I started seeing all these different connections. Well, there's connections between the Mosai stories, connections between Ippowers, accounts from ancient Egypt. I was like, okay, how much else do we have around here? There's an even older ancient account of an emperor, Yahoo, a... Uh, not H O O U Y A H O U. No, no, no. It's 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 Y A H O E or something. It's, it's it's spelled differently, but it sounds the same. Now this emperor talked about a time that I think dates around 2900 B.C., where he says the oceans topped the high mountains of China and this thing was seen in the sky again just like in the uh, Ippower account he says the fire on high was seen in the sky for almost 10 days so here again in ancient China they're seeing something in their sky and you're having a massive flood but in this case, it actually went, it topped the high mountains of China. Has anyone seen the uh, the old film 2012? Have you seen that yourself, uh, Yeah, the, Janet? Two, the, the one about the apocalypse, he, uh, the, they had the arcs up in the mountains. Is that the one? Yes, they had, they, they had huge ships up there in the mountains that they had built. Now, one part in there always grabbed everyone's attention. When you had the monk sitting in his... his uh, his uh, uh, place there in Tibet, and he, right. he looks over his right, and here comes the ocean right over the top, <laughs> over of, the top of the mountains. It's like, oh my goodness, this nowhere to go. Exactly, this is exactly what uh, Emperor Yahoo was describing, and it took them like thirteen or almost fifteen years with manual labor to drain all of the high mountain valleys of ocean water back down to the rivers. That's how I wonder how high anybody survived to um, do this if they it all, was that high. They all, went, they all ran to the high, the high mountains and, 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 and survived. Plus, when it was over and done with, 
they couldn't tell where the where, where all the constellations were anymore because everything had shifted. Now this was the exact same thing who were mentioned at the end of his text I sent to you earlier. Ippa War was back in 1550, somewhere around there, and he was describing that the destroyer. The well, destroyer here comes Dr. Ancient... Lesson, so hold one moment. Let him get his earphones okay. on so he can be a part of this. Oh, sure. Hi, sweetheart. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> we're, we're talking about some... Uh, go say hi. Hi. Hi to our listeners. Okay. We are talking about the... Um, devastations that happened in different periods throughout history. And uh, Bob sent me some papers. He got a little reading to catch up. And we talked about the Mosai book number five, which is the early 1600s to 1586 BC, where they're talking about fire raining from the sky and um, all kinds of, it was uh, sand rain for 10 days. What happened for 10 days? Something happened for 10 days. Anyway, I have to highlight this better. Um, it kind of blends into itself. And then the next was this Chinese emperor, Yahoo, Y-A-H-O-U is what it's spelled in the document, around 2900 B.C. And he said there was flooding up over the top of the mountains. And so go ahead. What happened after, so that the constellations, they couldn't see the constellations anymore. So continue. All the constellations. What had happened was a uh, a basic geographical pole shift where... Each time the destroyer comes through our system, the destroyer is, the, is one of many names that has been known for thousands of years for Nibiru. The destroyer is the ancient Egyptian name for the, the Nibiru, where when every time Nibiru comes through, all the stars in the sky shift to new positions. They don't know where the constellations are. The sun and the moon rise and, and set in different places. And I'm trying to find one part. If I had to put it aside, uh, let's see, hold on. Right, it says with the Mosey book that the, uh, wait, I just lost it. It said that the sun and the, oh, I just lost it. <laughs> they didn't, didn't, nothing was in, uh, coming on time. The sun and the moon didn't set when they thought it would, so. So we yeah. have two yeah, different... in one of the nearings, uh, it uh, Nibiru came close to Uranus and totally uh, jiggled everybody and sped up so that it's uh, instead of being 3,600 years uh, in its orbit, it, it sped up to 3,450. That's 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 entirely possible. Of I'm not a scientist type person. I've heard other scientists say that different spatial bodies that are around it as it's orbiting around could either increase its time or decrease its time depending upon what happens. So it won't yeah. exactly show up on the same time every time it goes around because our planet and the planets in the rest of our system are also showing up at different... They're not always at the same point in time facing the beer as it goes back out. So that's right. a possibility. Uh, so, you know, I was reading all these various different things, and it were mentioned that the, the story had been in through our system several times. It hit, it struck Earth, I think, twice. Right. Meaning that it, it had gotten too close, and it, it put all these things, all these rocks it, down. And right, and its moon, it, hit, its moon hit once. One of its moons hit and gouged out the Pacific Basin. That's possible, too. Um, yeah, billions of years ago. Right. And when I started uh, digging through the great, the great Flood, the Sumerian versions that we were just talking about last week, I started seeing the exact same type of things, where they said also that as the destroyer passed, all of the sh- all of the stars shifted to new locations, but there's one thing that really bothers me. It in the Colbrin version, which I gave your wife earlier today. I typed the whole thing out, the excerpt, and the ancient Mosai version, and the ancient 
Emperor Yahoo, they all said there was great heat and great cold during the time of the flood. These were never mentioned in the Bible. The Bible mentions the the storm only, the building of the ark, the sending out of the birds, the doves to look for things, and they don't mention any of this other stuff. Let's see, I'm going to go... Well, let's get the timeline. No, that's very, very interesting. Of course that had to happen in the... uh, in the in the upheavals in the nearing of seventy five or seventy thousand years ago, uh, the volcanoes start running. They this they, they uh, there's this huge energy. In, uh, uh, the there's earthquakes. It it's the heat is escaping from the bowels of the earth. Well, it would be good to do and, a timeline of these catastrophes, and and then we could probably correlate some of the things that have happened. That's why I don't know where you're getting the timeline from, but we can. We can uh, yeah, uh, I'm saying, chart all yeah. this. Now, the the main thing that pulls it all together for me, not everyone else, I, I agree. Uh, let's see. The book I mentioned last time is called Catastrophe. Um, it talks, it, uh, two authors wrote this a while back, and this is a very heavy book, believe me. It was very heavy and just trying to understand and read it. Um, catastrophe, compelling evidence of a cosmic catastrophe in 9,500 B.C. In there, yeah. they mention that if something were to come too close to the Earth, kind of like Nibiru does, it come, it, it's not that close, but it's, it's intense gravity actually has the effect. And they mention as as something would pass near the Earth that had an intense gravity wave, it would actually slow down the rotation. Now, this would do several things. The rotation we have actually keeps a lot of the ocean water out as a bulge all the way around the equator. So you're not really seeing all that water, Okay. As the rotation slows down and maybe it's it stops, all that water races to everywhere around the planet and everything gets a lot deeper very quickly. Flood. Another thing that they That would be totally consistent in, with the flood, yeah. Yeah. Another thing they mentioned in there was that all of the winds that were going around our planet would suddenly be heavily increased. Now, this oh, would cause yeah. just massive wind force that's speeding that, oh, God, I'll, I couldn't even, I have an idea how fast they'd be going. Those winds would destroy almost everything around the planet. Yeah. This would also cause a, a massive heat wave to go around the planet because of certain ways they, try, they try to do that they tried to describe what all this stuff would do. And they also claimed that there actually would be a freezing going around the planet until the Earth sped back up. So it wiped out would, surface life. Possibly. It out. Now, because if this is exactly what happened on every time the view went through, we would no one would be any no one would have any records of this stuff. So no, not it depends everyone... on, the, on on where we were in our orbit at the time that either Nibiru or its uh, uh, Lagrange points passed through. It's that it's not too, every time yes. that it has effect because we're not always in the same location to each other. Correct. So it's only periodic. Different inclines of the pl- of the planes of the ecliptics themselves. Exactly. Now. With Nibiru going outbound, because it, it orbits clockwise around us, and we we orbit counterclockwise, the further we we are away from Nibiru as it goes through there, the less problems we have. If right. we're actually very close to where it would be, you know, we're, we would clearly see this massive thing in the sky. And that's what all 
every one of these ancient tales all mention that they saw something in the sky that went from heavens down to just barely touching the earth. It was that wow. big. As it Do they uh, the they sky. talk about changes in Solaris? Well, all of these, if if you were to believe any of these ancient accounts, they're from the human point of view. They're seeing just something in the sky that's causing, and they have no idea that it is actually having this cause and effect here on the planet. Okay. They're just thinking, whoa, look at that thing. That God must have sent that thing because he's ticked off at us, okay? Right. And all these earthquakes and the, and the washing of the, of the land because of the, the, uh, the waves and stuff, they don't realize that's a, ca- that's a cause and effect. So they think but God they do has notice done that all they, this. They notice that the Anunnaki got the hell off the planet before it happened. They, they went did, up in their yeah. ships. And, and the apparently there's a lot of people alive to write all these stories. So it's not that it wipes out everything. That's but exactly it's certainly... right. Now, in the it's... Cauldron, which is a, a, a hardback book I got from Australia or New Zealand, I forgot which now, they mention there's at least four different versions of the flood talking about it from different points of view. Okay, now the 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 uh, version I sent to uh, Janet this morning was an excerpt from the Coleman, which matches up exactly with what Zachariah Sitchin wrote in his book, The Lost Book of Enki. Right. Uh, I think it's tablet number 10, where mm-hmm. Enlil ordered all of the Anunnaki to not, not tell the humans anything. But yeah, he, Anu Enki was or, or went Anu to his told, son. Uh-huh. Enki went to his son and told him through a reed wall exactly what was going to happen. Uh, let's see. Uh, right. Yeah, how, how do you, how how do you an, pronounce his name perhaps, again, Janet? Uh, Zia Yes, yes, sir. Let's, the, let the, Dr. Listen say something. The king, me. the king Anu yeah. wrote uh, uh, wired back saying, "Yeah, don't war, war, uh, warn the earthlings, but you must warn the hybrids, the uh, uh, ex astronauts, the Ejiji that took uh, uh, wives among the earthlings. You've got to tell them so they can get to high ground or uh, get off the planet. You can't drown them." That was the order of, of, of King Anu. Uh, and yes. So besides. Uh, the defiance of uh, Anki, who, uh, with the help of Galzu, actually put a computer program in uh, uh, the computer bank of Ziasudra or Noah, uh, which, with the uh, plans of how to uh, make the submersible, and it was driven by Ninigal, uh, the son uh, of uh, Anki. And exactly. So it, 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 yeah. But it was also it was there were survivors all over. What happened is Ninurta found the descendants of Kn. Uh, the uh, American Indians up in the lake, they had gotten rafts in the middle of Lake Titicaca, so they survived. The, po- yeah. the Hopi relate dr- digging out, and what they amazed them is the environment was gone. They were okay, but the environment was destroyed. Yeah, all the exactly. plants and vegetables, and so what were they going to eat? And the plants and the food, all the food was gone. So, you know. so you were saying that yeah. there's four. Four versions of the, the flood. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes. Uh, well, the one I'm mostly mentioning here, this is the one where he told his son, Zia Sudra, he told him to build this large boat up near the mountains uh, so that the water will come up to him. Now, the boat is the exact same size as the ark in the Bible. Uh, let's see. And he tells in detail how to build it. You know, and this, this, this yeah, it was ship... Four, st- four story building or something like Four story ship, I think. Give or take, it actually had three decks. The lowest three. deck was for the... Three. Three decks. The lowest deck was for the heavy animals. In between deck, the second deck was for the birds and for uh, plants 
and things that they were going to need later on. And each one of these decks were separated by partitions to make have all this stuff in there. The third deck was mainly for the uh, the king, Zeusudra, and his house and and his family, not his household. His household was forbid was forbidden from going with him. And he takes all these these other people with him, all the craftsmen uh, for quarrying stones, making bricks, axes and weapons, uh, for making bread, musical instruments, uh, pottery, care of gardens, carving of wood and stone, making of roofs, uh, working of timbers, making cheese and butter, growing of trees and plants, uh, one for making plows, one from brewing beer. Now that was actually pretty good. <laughs> that one was there. important. Got to take the beer brewers. <laughs> uh, so you're saying that let me, make, So you're saying he brought a bunch. How many people? The, did, the craftsmen, the, the, the masters, the, uh, exactly, uh, yeah, yeah, in the, uh, including one dancer. One. All right. We know that he's a male or female. You know, and uh, there was uh, one of the mysteries of the scribe. So this person knew how to write and probably to do other types of stuff. One for working of leather. leather. You know, so uh, all this stuff. The kind, one who knew the cunning of games and circus. One who was a hunter. And one who was a watchman. So all these, you know, it wasn't just Noah and his family. It was the king and all these other people, which probably included Noah, and all these craftsmen so that when they ever were to um, land somewhere, they wouldn't be, you know, completely without anyone doing it. Has, has anyone ever read or seen the movie the uh, uh, by, um, I can't remember, it. There, was, there was a book, and I'm, I'm forget, I'm not remembering exactly, where, this, where the devil took over parts of what we call modern times, and this old lady actually had God on her side. I can't remember the name of the book or the movie, but you probably remember it. And no, all I don't the, think I saw that one. <laughs> all of the good people went went to the, the old lady, and they went up to Boulder, Colorado. The devil brought everyone to Las Vegas. <laughs> now, these are, these are the survivors of this, this stuff that the devil allowed of course, Boulder. Was they go to Boulder, yes. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, these are the survivors that God said would survive, and these are what... Wait, so here they are. There's doctors. There's engineers. There's this, this, and that. They had all these technicians from almost every part of society, and now they're starting over. Just well, like that makes here, sense. Yeah. Just Enlil like did not want had... them to have the. He Enlil wanted to make sure that uh, there would be no possibility of an Earthling army that would get behind Marduk and, and uh, Nibiru. He wanted this race gone for a number of reasons. You know, one of them oh, yeah. was against interplanetary. Uh, it was more than that. It was like preventing a Marduk who's was supposed to be the heir after Alalu to the throne of, of Nibiru from ever raising an earthling army. And he thought, ah, I'm going to get rid of all of them. But it didn't work. And then it found the same uh, passing through the nearing of Nibiru that destroyed, that made all this havoc on Earth also ripped away the gold shield on Nibiru itself. So again, they needed gold and they needed the, these people that uh, Enki exactly. had saved. To restart the civilization and, and get Earthlings to breed and and, and slave. Exactly. Uh, this last pass, like you just said, Nibiru was damaged again because of the close call, the close call, and I guess the gravitational pull of the sun and some of the planets actually ripped on the shield again. So yeah, so the you know, Nibiru gets damaged as well as the Earth. So it's not a good thing for anybody when this planet comes through. But for for me, exactly. the tie up is, is your the photos you have of the activity of the Sun itself as Nibiru or its uh, debris field pass through, and that's like stunning. It's like such a tie up from these ancient 
uh, studies to what's happening right now. Right, we're mm-hmm. going to get to that. We're, we're we're teasing our audience. We're going to get to the photos at the end <laughs> of the show, or towards the, the second half of the show. But we're going a little background here about all the times there's these catastrophes uh, whenever Nibiru or the Lagrange points. Explain what Lagrange points are, honey, to our listeners. Okay, so uh, in the uh, orbital field that's called the the ecliptic the plane of the orbit of a, a planet any planetary body there's uh stuff that stays 180 degrees away from it on the ellipse and stuff at 90 degrees at the two 90 degree points and in nibiru's case since nibiru had crashed into tiamat which was the proto earth and it was between uh, mars and jupiter and left this huge uh, field, which we call the asteroid belt. They called it the hammered uh, belt. And a lot of comets, which are ice built around rocks and stuff like that, in this field. So that even when it, when Nibiru is far away, and right now it may appear to be somewhere in Delphinius, in the Sagittarius area. But it, it, we still have to deal with this place. It has a place where it goes through. It's called the Cooper Gap, where all this crap comes through. Well, our, mm-hmm. uh, you know, our, our covert government may have ways of deflecting uh, some of this uh, stuff, we should hope. Uh, and there, there's a lot of stuff we don't know because we're being uh, kept out of the loop of what technology is available. But uh, that's, what it, it's, that's what the uh, Lagrange point is. It's a mathematical place at 180 and the two places at 90 degrees, the planet never runs into that stuff because the forces of gravity balance out and it stays that distance. Right. You know, and you know, you, you've got all these people in there, and here's, here's how they describe what happened next after they closed up everything. It says, then with the dawning, men saw an awesome sight. There, riding on a great black rolling cloud, came the destroyer. And this thing just, uh, it, it, was, it was just huge, and fa- it was just enormous. And in the evening, the places of the stars were changed. They rolled across the sky to new stations. Then the flood waters came. Wow. Yeah. I mean, and this is from what writing again? Is, what, what the Colburn you're saying? This is in the Colburn. It's called the Colburn Bible, and Bible is only for the name that certain books that were done in this one area called Biblia. Okay, now this is an exact quote from the book. This sounds like a witness from somebody that was there. It is so vivid. Exactly. It, it talks about the storehouses of the winds burst their bolts asunder, so, so storms and whirlwinds were loosed to hurl themselves upon the earth. In the seething waters and howling gales, all buildings were destroyed. Trees were uprooted and mountains cast down. There was a time of great heat. Then came a time of bitter cold. This is during the flood. The flood that's called the flood of Noah. Yeah. The waves over the waters did not rise and fall, but seethed and swirled. There was an awful sound above. Now, if you if you read the 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 part from the lost book of Enki, his son built the ark to be a submersible. Yeah, that's right. right. And they closed they closed the hatch. Before the, the waves hit, and it just it was went under Yes, yeah. and they only opened the hatch once everything calmed back down, and that's just like in, in there. They you know, Noah set out the dove, and blah blah blah, but the ship was actually powered somehow, and it was actually guided to this one area. Uh, so wait, 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 there's two different versions. One, it's he's he's on top of Ararat to begin with. The he's other on one, on top of a mountain. We uh, don't know it's Ararat. Oh, oh, I see. It could be he's guided to. Uh, what uh, our, our take was that the mathematics of 
waves could be worked out exactly from the uh, sliding into the uh, South Sea of the Antarctic ice cap. And so they said in 120 days, you're going to, or a certain amount of days, you're going to surface and then raise sail. And there's actually a, uh, on the wall of Abydos, there is a, it shows the same ship that was described with its mast that could be raised. That's okay. possible. Now, in this version from the Colburn, they don't mention anything about masts or sails or nothing, but they do say that the, ma- that the ship came aground, uh, came to rest upon Cardo in the mountains of As- Astar against Nishim in the land of God. That's how. That's where they describe it. Okay. Do you know how that translates? So, is that Ararat or is it somewhere else? It, it's it's probably just the other names that no one else has used or known about for just countless centuries. The, re- the, re- the reason that uh, that uh, Sitchin thought it was Ararat because it's the same name as the place that they used as an anchor for when they changed the uh, when they built the new landing uh, field. Uh, on Sinai, yeah. and it was a, they used the same word as that was their what they were picturing, and they alluded to that's the place where uh, Noah had landed. Let's see. Okay, yeah, so it's just, it's just the destruction and recreation that you sent to me. Oh, this is wonderful. This 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 Coburn. We, well, we're we going to order this book right oh, away. Wow, yeah. and the <laughs> language is so descriptive. Oh, it is. Uh, so, what is the it, origin it, of it these texts? Great you have detail. that. Mm-hmm. Pardon? Do you know the origin of these texts that wound up in this Colburn uh, Bible? As okay, called? if you believe a lot of the ancient tales that after the Exodus, the Egyptian pharaoh demanded to know how and why the god of the slaves was more powerful than all of Egypt's magic. He actually had, supposedly, had Ippawar, which was a highly trained Egyptian scribe, and all the other scribes that still survived, and anyone else that had ancient stories or whatever from where these people came from, they actually had all this information brought forward, which probably is the reason why all of these tablets were found back in the 1800s over and over and over detailing exactly everything about the Sumerians which were 4,000 years before the time of the Bible. And these stories went even further back describing the Anunnaki who was basically their god or these Anunnaki different people were their gods in plural. That, I think, is the whole reason why all of this stuff actually survived until it was recently found in the 1800s. So, so the, 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 which, uh, which uh, documents were described in the 1800s? Where was this that they were found, and what were they? Uh, there were several locations around uh, down there in what's now Samaria. Where diff- I, I can't remember all the names, all the places. But they 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 found old Nineveh, ancient. Big, the big findings were, were at Nineveh. Nineveh. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and then they found these huge amounts of of scribed stones. God, look at all. I think it was like almost what twenty thousand or, or or more. Yeah, uh, 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 library had been burned there at uh, Nineveh, and it fired all these little. And it was they were just they were like a filing system, like a giant computer, mm-hmm. and, and uh, sorted out. But much of this uh, was preserved, and of course Sitchin has studied it intensely, and he could read the read it. Now, uh, Janet, I, I, I sent like, you the. Say that Toth, uh, had uh, during the flood had also uh, uh, made uh, tablets, which he put underneath uh, uh, deep, deep uh, underneath the uh, the earth, and they, he dug that out too. And he had these tablets, which recorded the history of the Anunnaki on the planet. I think so. Yeah. Uh, Jen, I sent you the links for the the Colbrin, uh where you can actually read some of the pages that are on the Skype. Yeah, I printed them um, out. I have. Um, I printed out the ones. Uh, I went and I did it quickly in between okay. you sending me all this stuff. And I have the introduction, creation, 
uh, destruction and recreation, the affliction now, of God. All, all of all of these ancient texts and scrolls and whatever, they were a much larger version that existed up until I think around 300 A.D. when uh, when they created the Bible and what was put into the Bible and everything else that was not put in the Bible was called heresy. And when they were found, they were to be burned or destroyed. Now, whoever had all the stuff that you see is part of what was originally the, these ancient tales, they kept it all underground or hidden all the way up until the 1100s, where wow. Henry II found out about these priests at this one convent type thing, and he ordered everything to be burned. Now, before they all these assassins got there, part of the priest that had this stuff was able to save around half. half of it well, we, we, we suspected there's more than one place where these things are hidden, so eventually they'll all Probably, be recovered. Yes. But we still have people that are destroying and burning because we got a bunch of crazies in power here. Exactly. They, they have a version of reality that they exactly. want us to believe in. And to maintain, so... Well, there was computer records underneath uh, the uh, uh, Jerusalem, right? That's where Mission Control was. Right, so probably there are places uh, where what, everything yeah. is Winaco, so intact. Uh, Winaco, the, the part of Tiwanaku, there's a underwater... Uh, they flooded it on purpose. They had computer banks down in Winaco, too. Mm. Yeah, so these, these various tales I sent to you, Janet, for both of you, they, they just give detail, and, and these things go back far further than Zacharias Fitchin. Oh, There's yeah. no way Zacharias, maybe, I, 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 don't, I, didn't, I don't know personally if he ever did read these things, you know, because everyone kind of kept the Colburn book quiet until only recently. But if he did see these things, they would have backed up exactly what, he started to put out in his books. The, we don't know what he saw have, or didn't see, you, but uh, you just have to get, go ahead. You have to get the Colburn and you have to read it carefully. It's we were going to, definitely. We're into it. Well, thank you for turning you know, us and, on to that. And, you know, your listeners can also go there and they can just, you know, I have the book. I'm going to make a photograph of eventually, and I just have little page after page of, uh, of uh, stickers put inside so I can go from yeah, one it, place to the oh, other to the other to the other. It's so obvious. It's, Our ancestors were there and they're telling us what they saw. For heaven's sakes, we have to see what it is. And they were doing the best they could with the metaphors they had to describe experience. But let's, let's uh, and there it is, eyewitness stuff. This is hot. It is. You know, and, and this is just the Colburn's talk about it, and the Colburn also has some stuff we're going to talk about later, which is the other version of the uh, the Exodus. All these documents were all kept all this time, but no one really knows where they are, except for us. Wow. I mean, you know, it's such a story about the Exodus is that, you know, since uh, Joseph had been the overseer uh, of uh, Egypt and brought his his whole family in during the famine, and there were six hundred thousand uh, descendants of Jacob Israel, and uh, it looked like they were a fifth column uh, as, yeah. uh, for, uh, as far as the Pharaoh was concerned, and he uh, he was being pushed uh, on by his uh, the Enki uh, the Enlilites uh, all around, and it's it's. Basically, he has this whole story about who Moses was, and uh, that he was—they were—they <laughs> were the branded ones uh, that that uh, <laughs> Yahweh thought was his, and he could tell because he had to, he had branded them by cutting off their foreskin. Right, that was a requirement. They got to cut off their foreskin. That was uh, mm. Moses Akhenaten. That's my question. It, it appears that he was, according to Gardner. You know, and, and you, you read this stuff. Okay, at this part here, I'm looking at the Lost Book of Enki. And when these humans finally did land on that, that mountaintop, 
the Anunnaki were just coming down and they saw them. Actually, Enki kind of led them to almost the same location. And Enlil was enraged. He wanted them to all to have been destroyed. And right. uh, en- they and Enki fight. points out Zia Sudra. Zia Sudra is amongst the, the ones that had just built an altar to uh, uh, give praise for their survival. And uh, he's saying, he is no mere mortal. My son he is, pointing to Zia Sudra. And uh, Enlil says, you broke your oath. And another one says, the survival of mankind, the will of the creator of all must be. That's a Ninurta. Right. And, uh, you know, uh, Ninma spoke to her, her necklace of crystals. On my oath, the annihilation of mankind shall never be repeated. Yay, Nimba! And they attributed yeah. to, that to God. They took that away from the woman, away from the exactly. goddess. Exactly. And, and they and, said, and, God and, said that. It was mother, yeah, not and, father. Exactly. And Enlil actually blessed the humans. He says, be fruitful and multiply and the earth replenish. So, yeah, they needed to have you know, someone it, uh, do their gardening and cook their foods. And <laughs> well, they had been well, manipulated well, you know, into the, staying the, on the, the planet. Uh, Sorry. Galzir Go had manipulated Enlil, and, uh, Nimma, and Enki uh, on, to staying on the planet, saying that if they returned to Nibiru, they would die uh, because they'd been on Earth so long. But that was uh, untrue. And uh, what happened is they and Anu, too, all really realized that a higher power... Uh, who was represented by this Gal Zoo, had deliberately said these uh, creatures, these earthlings, must not perish. And furthermore, you're responsible for taking care of them, he told especially Enki and Ngishida. Mm-hmm. So that was interesting that uh, Enlil, though, was blessing them and told them to be fruitful and multiply and... Yeah, they're going to work exactly. for you, boss. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute, cool it. They're smart. They're Enki's <laughs> kids. They're going to work for you. They're going to get the slaves to give you what you want. So cool it, daddy Yeah, that's probably what happened. Something like that. Daddy-o, geez, I mean, you're 80 or so. daddy you know, and, and, and And the interesting part was the, the part from the cauldron was actually talked about in the other tablets, but everywhere where it was supposed to have given details, they were destroyed or they were unreadable. So I think I think that the version that's in the Colvin Bible is the part that should have survived. You know, I can't imagine exactly. why they would go after the heat and cold or why they would why would they what motive could they have for cutting that out? I just it doesn't make any sense. Well, no, there's a lot of detail. It's probably because they didn't understand. I'm sorry. It's probably because they did not understand where the heat and cold was coming in. And only within the last, say, 50 years had the scientists actually been starting to understand how things would happen. And that's why the two authors of that one book, they went into very good detail as to You're how they thought. You're talking about catastrophe? Yeah. Compelling yes. evidence. We'll have to look this up on Amazon, catastrophe. With two it's it's authors. on Amazon. It's on Amazon. Uh, I have the Kindle version of the book, and it is something heavy duty to read. I swear, they went into all. If 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 I didn't know better, I would say they had read all the stuff about the flood because they talk about a flood happening, and they have all the the proof in that book. It tells about it. You know, it sounds like we're all going to die. <laughs> well, so is this going to happen again? <laughs> That's what we're I wondering. don't think so. I, th- I, I think the aliens had been intervening to make sure it does not happen again. They want okay, us. Okay, so let's talk about that a little bit. We're, 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 um, <laughs> so how have they been... There, so aliens right now are intervening so that this... Because Nisma promised... She said, I will never 
say, say that again, what she said. She said, I will never let this uh, happen to her, my humans again. Anyway, so, Nimma made the yeah. promise, not God, but Nimma, goddess, mother. And Nimma, yeah, uh, for those who don't know who oath, she is. Oh, go ahead. On yes, my oath. On, on my oath, the annihilation of mankind shall never be repeated. That was her oath. And Enlil had had and uh, uh, Ninma had a certain something from Anu, and she gave that oath, and Enlil had to live up to it. That's that's what I think, and I think that they mm-hmm. now, since they were. Uh, it, of course, they went from the flood, and they, they, things weren't perfect, and we'll fast forward to future episodes, which no. we're going to not be able to cover today, but, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah was a nuclear holocaust. But I think since that time, and we'll, we'll cover this in the, in the next couple of weeks here, a few th- weeks. You know, in 3034 uh, uh, B.C., Anu visited uh, Earth and uh, spent some time with his girlfriend, his, his great-granddaughter, Inanna and stuff. But at the, uh, he definitely, at that time, discussed with Enlil and Enki uh, the fact that uh, this, this species, although it was illegal to create us, uh, uh, was uh, to be protected. And he specifically told Ningashita Toth and Enki, uh, it's your job to make sure that the, this species survives. Right. Yeah. And so I think that they are still bound by that oath. And so they probably figured out how to prevent these uh, catastrophes because they have greater awareness and knowledge and they're more connected to the Galzu, which they discovered, right, that they can probably move us out of the way or do things so that we don't have this uh, harmful situation ever again. That's my theory. And and that's why the predictions and prophecies have not happened because – they, the aliens, have their massive uh, uh, things around our sun for the last six years. They're controlling our sun, which would be doing all this stuff to us right now. And this, so they, these, uh, these vessels around the sun are huge, right? Yes, they are gigantic. Tell our listeners a little bit more about these vessels, and then we're going to have photos of these on AquariumRadio.com. Yeah. Well, what, what, they, what they are are alien space probes. They're just gigantic. Uh, one of Soho's satellite cameras has been taking photos of them for over six years now, and they're all around our sun. Uh, I actually did a uh, video talking about these with third phase of the moon and if you go to that website on YouTube you can see you, if you put in Bob Evans or Robert Evans you'll go to two different uh, videos I did with them one was talking about these huge starships that we're, we've been talking about late, er, lately and the other one was about these huge alien space probes that are all around our sun yeah, are, are and, these robots or are they- I don't, uh, life forms I don't, on them. I don't know. For, I have no way of knowing. I just know that they are all around our sun. Okay, so the only reason that they have to be there is to control the output from our sun because we have not had any of the massive solar storms that all of our scientists said we would starting in 2012. Everything right. has been quiet. Okay, and these so are the this, this, control, the... this is beyond anything that uh, that uh, uh, our scientists could ever perform. Well, these, these craft, if you look, is huge. If you look at the the size of these craft, they are probably the size of planets. Probably they're huge. They're probably they the size of gi- planets. They're gigantic. They're gigantic. That's right. They look like you know, Mercury in some of the pictures. They're, this, uh, they're that size, Mercury right. size. Right. They're larger, some of them. So, you know, we've got and these. And they're just uh, all around our sun. You know, you, you, you well, know. there was a, a there was a photo, and I'll have to find it and put it on our site uh, from Nassim Harriman when the uh, Mexican government uh, let uh, some of these um, uh, archetypes or what are they call not what's um, 
from their digs. They they found a, a drawing on one of the digs, and it shows uh, the deflecting. They were deflecting something incoming. It's, it's an ancient drawing. It shows deflecting mm-hmm. something incoming so that they had the ability to prevent something from coming in and, and affecting the earth. And so I'll, I'll find that. I I have it somewhere yeah. on my computer, hopefully. So yeah. perhaps this they're should... able to deflect these meteors. We're talking about dragons. We're talking about fire raining from the sky and all these uh, other effects that happened during these cataclysms of the past. Right. So what do you think about but, those? Well, humanity at some point within the last 6,000 years finally looked like we were going upwards. So I think that is why they're protecting us now. Before we were all just, mm, those are all ancient type people. They're not really going anywhere. But look at our technology ever since. The Sumerians went to the Egyptians and everything else, and we went. We slowly started climbing the stairs towards almost what they are now, or what we what they were then. So we we're showing we're showing that we can actually almost be like them. We have the technology now. We've actually you know gone out into space our, ourselves, gone to the moon. Uh, we have, you know, all, all the air dips and stuff. So I think that is why they warned Eisenhower back in at Holloman Air Force Base in 1955 and 1954 there at Murak Airfield that this is the stuff that is coming. Start preparing for it. Maybe because we don't really know if we can stop it. And that was probably why all the deep underground military bases were built. That way the elites would survive. And once they survived, you know, they would be right there to be given advanced technology and stuff. But they have actually prevented this stuff from happening. That's my own personal thinking, and I'm going to stand by it. Because these things are out there. We're not having the storms we should have. Predictions and prophecies of all fell in I I hope so. <laughs> There's been a number of other things, like they they stopped uh, nuclear exchanges that almost happened by taking out uh, the computer command. There's been a number of uh, interventions. Mm-hmm. It's obvious that uh, somebody up there likes us. <laughs> exactly, well, that's... and 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 that's probably why these ships come into our system every day. Every and day, these, those ships, those ships are Anunnaki ships. I have no doubt about no it. No doubt, they match exactly the old Ahura Mazda wall carvings, where yeah. an and an, an, an Anunnaki god was standing right in front of them. Yeah, I'm sorry. yeah, yeah. Their wings extend. I mean, it's just exactly like with your pictures. And we'll uh, we'll you, post that on. You got, and this is this is amazing because also we'll we'll go into this next time. But one of the interesting things is that you've developed it. Which pictures are genuine and which ones aren't, which allows us to really examine the information that you've got from Soho. And so that's what we'll look at next time. So we're yeah. we're about every, out of time, every, but. Uh, sure. I want to, I want to, yeah, we, I think this is a good point to, uh, we can stop here and we'll pick this up next Friday and okay. uh, same time between uh, four, what is it, four to five Hawaiian time, uh, what is it, uh, seven to nine, uh, uh, seven to eight Pacific yeah. time, right, so we'll do this again next week and so we're going to pick up with, okay, so we're we're getting to we're making the connection between the ancient and the modern, and we've got ships around the sun. And we have intervention. We could have destroyed ourselves in modern times a hundred times over, and we have intervention. And we have control by uh, 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 forces that are holding down our uh, growth. That's the other, fi- so, <laughs> the other some, faction. Some, is- uh, some people believe that, yes, they're actually holding us back, and that probably is the elite because they don't want us to go forward. Because that kind of leaves them behind. It's right. possible. 
All right. Well, we, we're going to look at it more next week. We're running out of time. And <laughs> thank you once again. Ray, no we problem. enjoy this for, conversation so much, yes. And I, I, thanks for reading. You read really well. It was just like I was there. <laughs> yeah, it, well, it was, this, this is the type of stuff I've just researched the holy heck out of over the years. And it's like, why doesn't anyone else know about this? <laughs> well, they are. We're getting it out. You know, we know, and now they know, and they're going to spread this. They're going to download it. They're going to embed it on their sites. They're going to Facebook it. And then soon everybody's going to wake up and we're going to go, hey, remember we were so unconscious. Occam's razor. What <laughs> explains things best? And uh, yeah. things start getting simple fast. All right. Well, thank you so much, and we'll see you again next Friday, same time. And uh, so say goodbye. Any final words, everybody? Aloha. 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 Thank you. Love and blessings.